Okay, in this video we'll take a look at the what's called the formal definition of limits, or the epsilon delta definition. And it reads like this, the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to l if for each epsilon greater than zero there exists a delta greater than zero such that if the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Now this definition generally causes students a lot of confusion, mainly because of the notation and what it all means. So what we'll do in this video is uh, go through each part of it and explain what each, each section means. Then in the next video we'll use the epsilon delta definition to actually prove that a limit exists. Now before we get into the epsilon and the delta part of this thing, the formal definition, uh, most students, when they're introduced to limits, are given an informal introduction first, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and turn off this formal definition and just concentrate on the informal definition. So what the informal definition looks like is this, <clears throat> and most of you should be familiar with this. Um, it says as x approaches c, which just means that as x approaches c, you can put two little arrowheads down here, from the left and from the right, so x is getting closer and closer to c, um, that f of x, the function, and we'll use two red arrowheads for this one, um, that the function is approaching the number l. So as this so far, as x gets closer and closer to c, means these two blue arrowheads are coming, approaching each other at c. Yeah, then f of x is approaching l. So in other words, the two red arrowheads are approaching the single fixed number L. And if that's true, then the limit exists. And now, what we're going to be working on, we'll go back to the formal definition again, um, it's all based on a box around the point that you're interested in. So I think at this point I'll just go ahead and draw a, a box. I'm interested in the point as x approaches C, uh, f of x approaches L. Now you can tell by this example the limit does exist. So the idea is I'll go up and I'll start with this. I'm just going to put a, a uh, box around this thing. So we'll pick it about right here and go down, say, to here, um, across to here, <coughs> up like this, and over like this. So I've got a box around this thing. And a couple of words for you. You have to give the box a definition. We'll begin to put some of these things in. The idea is this. The point that I'm interested in is right here. <clears throat> so I've got a, the box has a top and a bottom, and it's got a left and a right. Now, the distance from uh, the point that I'm interested in to the top we'll call epsilon. That same distance as I go to the bottom is also called epsilon. So epsilon gives you the distance from the top and the bottom of the box. Uh, what delta is, delta will represent um, the width of the box. So um, from the center, if you go delta to the right, delta to the left, you get the width of the box. So as you're looking at this definition, just keep in mind, epsilon will define the top and the bottom of the box, delta will define the two sides of the box. And what we want to do is this, is the limit will exist if you can show that no matter how small you make the box, that the function is trapped inside the box, then that means that those two red arrowheads will have to be approaching each other and the limit exists. So what that is, that's just kind of the big picture of the whole thing. Now let's run through each part individually and take a look and see how it works. Okay, now the order that you go through this is important and the idea is this. Um, the first thing you do um, is work with epsilon. Epsilon defines the top and the bottom of the box, so you get to pick uh, the top and the bottom of the box, and then we'll go through the rest of it. So uh, epsilon represents the distance, and in this case we'll start right here and go uh, across like this. So starting at L, if I were to go up a distance epsilon, so suppose I took it up to right here, then this distance right here would be epsilon, and I'm going up that far. So there's the top of my box. Then I'll, starting from here, do the same thing. I'll go down a distance epsilon to right here. Um, so this distance right here is also epsilon. So I went up epsilon, down epsilon. That gives me the top and the bottom of my box. Now, if I started at L and went up epsilon, then this distance right here would be um, L plus epsilon. 
if I started at epsilon and went down, or at L and went down a distance epsilon, this distance right here would be L minus epsilon. So uh, what this does, it defines the top and the bottom of the box. So let's just go ahead and put those on it. So if I start here and we'll go across, say, to about right here, um, there's the top of my box. Then I'll go across to here, and there's the bottom of my box. So the first thing you do, um, and we'll put it right here, I think I'll just kind of circle this, is this part right here, you get to pick an epsilon that defines the top and the bottom of the box. So the top and the bottom of the box, and that's step one. So you got step one done. Okay, now the next step is this. You now get to pick the width of your box. So delta is going to help you define the width of the box, but where is it? Now the idea is this. You have to pick a delta so that no matter what x you pick later on, that the function itself is trapped inside the box. So let's look at some possibilities here. Um, what I'm going to do is, starting at C, and just like I started at L, and I went up and down a distance epsilon, I'll start at C, and I'll go left and right a distance delta. So to begin with, I'm going to start at C right here, and I'll go Um, a distance epsilon, or pardon me, delta to the right. So this is going to be a distance delta, and that's going to define the right side of my box. Then I'll go the same distance on the other side, from here uh, to here, and this distance is also delta, and that's going to define the left side of my box. So if I start at C and go delta to the right, this distance right here would be C plus delta. And if I started at C and went delta to the left, this distance right here would be C minus delta. Now let's go ahead and draw the box from here. So if I start here and go straight up from there, um, I'll go up to this high. There's the right edge of the box. And if I start here and go up to here, uh, I'll do that. There's the left edge of the box. So what I've actually defined is here's the box right here. <coughs> so um, let's go back and identify what these are. We'll go back to our notes here. Um, this one, this would be step two. So step one is to identify the top and the bottom of the box. Step two is to identify the two sides of the box. So delta gives you the sides of your box. So you got the sides of the box. Okay, now what you have to do is this. The limit will exist if you can trap the function inside the box. So no matter what value of x you pick within uh, the box, if you get a corresponding y that stays within the box, then that means the function is inside the box, and if you let uh, the box get smaller and smaller and smaller, um, if the function stays inside the box, then you can show that the two arrowheads are approaching L and the limit exists. So right now we've got a box set up. Uh, and the box goes from here to here to here to here. Okay, let's move across to the next part of the definition. And the next part of the definition says this. And we'll turn these little notes off up here at the top. So now the next thing you do, this, this will be the third step is you get to pick any x you want to, which is what this thing is right here. You get to pick any x. So what I'll do is come down, and I get to pick an x, but in English it says this. You have to pick an x that's within the width of the box. So it has to go from here to here. So somewhere between, in this blue line, you have to pick a value of x. So just to give us something to look at, suppose I picked an x right here. So I'm going to pick this value of x. And I think I'll put it in black just to make sure it kind of stands out. So there's my value of x right there. Um, if I come straight up from that x, and I'll have a corresponding value of y, if I were to go from here across to here, then this would be f of x. So what I've got is an x and an f of x. So if I can pick any value of x I want to, 
and it gives me a value of y that stays inside the box, then I've satisfied the definition. And I can do this for no matter how small I make the box. Okay, now this, the next thing is this part right here usually causes students some confusion. Just what is it? The absolute value of x minus c is less than delta. And let's do a little sidebar thing and show what that looks like. Okay, so what it would be, and we'll do this one in blue here. <clears throat> so um, I want to pick an x that's within this blue range. So that means that the value of x that I pick has to be less than c plus delta, and it also has to be greater than c minus delta. It has to be somewhere in between. So this is what it would look like. x has to be less than c plus delta, and it also has to be greater than c minus delta. So that guarantees that the value of x stays somewhere inside the box. Now, to change this into this, you do the following. If I go ahead and just subtract c, it's an inequality, so go ahead and subtract c from this, subtract c from this, and subtract c from this. And what that'll give you, these cancel out and give you a negative delta <coughs> is less than, and this becomes x minus c, and that is less than, c's cancel out, and that gives you delta. So the distance x minus c has to be less than delta. And just real quickly, what this distance is, the distance x minus c, is this distance right here. The distance between x and c. So all this statement says is, if you pick an x minus c that's less than delta, then you're inside the box. If you pick an x out here, then this distance would be greater than delta, and that's not what you want in the definition. So the definition requires that you pick a value of x that's inside the width of the box. Now finally, how this statement turns into this, you might remember from absolute values. <clears throat> if x minus c is less than delta and greater than negative delta, that means that the absolute value of x minus c uh, has to be less than delta. So all that is is just changing it into an absolute value. Now finally, the last part, this little greater than zero thing over here, <clears throat> says that you can let this distance get as small as you want to, but you can never let x equal c because the limit is only defined as x approaches c. So since x can never equal c, this distance can never equal zero, so you tack on this uh, less than zero. So um, where this comes from um, is just all you're doing is saying let x stay within the box. So even though it looks kind of confusing, that entire statement just says pick a value of x that is inside the box, or in other words, less than delta. Um, and that's what that looks like. Okay, now let's take a look at the epsilon version of that. Okay, now before we go on to the epsilon, let's take one last quick look at these two statements together because they look confusing, but actually they're really easy what they say. So what this one says is this. Uh, if you pick any value of x that you want to that's within the width of the box, or in other words, less than delta, so it's right here. If you pick any x that you want to, um, what this statement says is that you will get an f of x that lies within the top and the bottom of the box. If that's the case, then the limit exists. So the idea is uh, pick any x you want to that's inside the width of the box. That's this statement right here. <clears throat> and if it results in a value of y that's within the top and the bottom of the box, then you've showed that the function is indeed trapped inside the box, and uh, you can show that the limit exists. So uh, let's, before we go on now, um, I think I'll draw a quick picture of it right here. Let's go over here and um, this distance, it's got f of x minus l. And what that is, that's this distance from here to here. So the distance from l <coughs> um, to whatever the y value of the function is. And again, as long as that distance right there is less than this distance epsilon, then the y value stays inside the box and you've achieved your goal. But real quickly, let's run through this absolute value thing here for epsilon exactly like we did it for delta. So the idea is this. I want to make sure that f of x, the y value, is less than the top of the box, which is L plus epsilon, and greater than the bottom of the box, which is L minus epsilon. 
So we'll do our same little thing over here. Let's say that we want to make sure <clears throat> that f of x is less than L plus epsilon, the top of the box, and you also have to show that it's greater than L minus epsilon, the bottom of the box. And just like we did with this one, last time we subtracted C, this time subtract L. So I'll subtract L there, um, subtract L there, and subtract L there. This gives me negative epsilon <clears throat> is less than, um, here the L's canceled out, this becomes F of X minus L, and here the L's cancel out and leave you with epsilon. Now again, that's just an <clears throat> absolute value definition, so that will show that F of X minus L, the absolute value of that, is less than epsilon. And that is where this comes from. And again, all this says is the distance from f of x to l has to be less than the distance to either the top or the bottom of the box, which means that it stays inside the box. So we'll uh, go ahead and remove that just so we don't have to look at it. So one more time, let's just kind of run through the whole thing and see what we've actually got here. Uh, and I think I'll go back to our little notes up here at the top. <clears throat> um, so the idea is this. Uh, and, the, and the order you want to do them is this. It's starting, uh, first of all, uh, use epsilon to establish the top and the bottom of the box. So you get to pick epsilon, uh, you know, the two red lines, the top and the bottom of the box. Then if you can find a distance delta, delta gives you the width of the box. So the idea is that epsilon and delta, the top two things here, number one and two, give you the top and the bottom of the box. They define the edges of the box. Then all these last two say is that if you can pick any x uh, that's within the width of the box and it gives you a resulting value of y that's within the top and the bottom of the box and that's true for any epsilon that you pick, then you can show that the limit exists. And really that's what the whole definition looks like. Now I think let's try one last thing. Um, just to show you that we've looked at what happens when it works, let's take a quick look at what happens when it doesn't work. So um, I'm going to go to here, and let's do this. Let's erase the function to here, and suppose that rather than having the function come together, suppose the function did this. It went to right here, <clears throat> but rather than having the two lines approach each other, where the function exists, let's suppose it did this. Suppose it turned and it went up like this and it wound up outside the box. Now, what effect would that have on it? Well now, initially let's run through it. We pick a top and a bottom of the box, you picked the sides of the box, and within the box this thing right here says you get to pick any x you want to, and the limit will exist if you can show that y is trapped inside the box. Well, starting with this x right here, um, it uh, it works. So if I pick this x right here, I get a value of y that's inside the box. But if I do this, if I let this x slide closer and closer and closer this direction, then I'll get a value of y. If I were right here, I'd get a value of y here, still inside the box. If I let x go to right here, <clears throat> then I'd get a value of y inside the box. But if I let finally let x get even closer, at some point here, <clears throat> I'm going to get a value of y that is outside the box. So what that means is this distance from y to l is now greater than epsilon, so uh, the function is no longer trapped inside the box, and the limit would not exist there. So you have to be a little bit careful about that. Okay, let's try one last thing here, and let's go back to the original uh, drawings. It looks like this. Now, you get to pick whatever epsilon you want to. Um, and the question then becomes, uh, are there any guidelines at all on what to pick for delta? So let's take a quick look at it and see. Um, on this one, um, as you begin the problem, you get to pick the top and the bottom of the box. So you pick an epsilon that defines the top and the bottom of the box. And as you saw in the previous examples, we then picked a delta that defined the sides of the box. And let's take a quick look at that. So our delta was this. But the question is, how far out should delta be? Are there any guidelines on picking delta? And yes, sort of. Um, 
The idea is this, is you want to pick, once you set up your box, it has to be set up so that any value of x that you pick inside the box, if you calculate a value of y, that the y value also stays inside the box. And that's what this thing says right here. f of x has to be less than, L than uh, epsilon. In other words, it has to stay inside the box. So the function cannot go out of the top of the box, and it also can't go out of the bottom of the box. If it does that, then you will not have uh, properly used the definition. So the question is, how far left or right? Now, I picked it right here. Could I have picked a smaller delta or a bigger delta? And let's just play around with that a little bit and see here. So we'll stretch them just a little. Um, so some guidelines. Suppose that I had let delta be smaller. So I'll shrink delta right here, and we'll go ahead and do it this way, is we'll pinch delta in. Now, if I had picked a smaller delta here, notice what happened, is no matter what value of x I pick, and looking at this box right here, the red and the blue box, no matter what value of I pick, x I pick that was within the width of the box, I will get a value of y that stays within the top of the, and the bottom of the box. But let's stretch it out a little bit. Suppose I'd picked a wider epsilon, or wider delta. So if I spread delta out, now I'm going to take it out to right here. And you'll see a couple problems here. Um, suppose I let this be delta. Now look at the problem. If I came right in here and picked, uh, and picked a value of x right here, and I went straight up and calculated a value of y, notice... Here's the value of y about right here, and it's outside the box. So that does not satisfy the definition. I picked a value of x that's inside the width of the box, but it gave me a value of y that's out of the top of the box. And notice it also works over here. If I came over here and picked a value of x, then here's my box right here, defined by this. Um, if I pick a value of x here, all these values of y are below the bottom of the box. They're outside the box. So again, this value of delta is too wide. It doesn't guarantee that the function will stay within the box. So a good kind of a rule of thumb that you might use on this is this. Is, uh, we'll go ahead and move it back in a little bit. Is I'll scoot it in until the following happens. Now notice on this side, <coughs> um, the function comes out the side of the box. On this one, it comes out the bottom of the box. So pick your delta so that the function comes out both sides of the box. So what happens if I scoot it in, and I'm okay on this side, but I'm still not okay on this side because it's going out the bottom of the box. So I'll continue to scoot it in, and I'll move it into about right there. Now what happens is here's my box right here. Um, the function goes out the side of the box on the right, it goes out the side of the box on the left. It doesn't go out the top, it doesn't go out the bottom, so I'm okay. So again, you want to pick your x's, actually you want to pick your delta, so that you can pick x's that guarantee that the function doesn't come out either the top or the bottom of the box. So let's take one last look at that. This would be okay. The function is coming out the right side of the box here, the left side of the box here. But if I were to spread the box out, <coughs> then I've got a problem right here. Now the function is going out of the bottom of the box, so I've picked a value of delta <coughs> that will allow me to pick x's so that the function is not trapped inside the box. So there's just one final thing to show you, uh, uh, give you some guidelines on how to select delta. And with that, um, that's a kind of a general overview of the epsilon delta definition of limits. Now in the next video, we'll use this definition to actually prove that a limit exists.